In this week's episode of Survivor, the pre-merge episode, we saw six of the 12 castaways that were left in the game be screwed over by production, meddling, and a twist that they did not know about and could not plan for. Thus, someone who won immunity the previous episode ended up being voted out. These are not spoilers. The episode has been out for a couple of days now. Calm down. So then, I couldn't help but wonder. Have there been times on Drag Race when queens were screwed over by the production, introducing a never-before-seen or mentioned twist? Okay, I'm lying. Sydney being voted out was not what got me to do this video, I just needed a more recent example for the intro. It was actually Victoria Scon being taken out of the competition due to her injury that she sustained in a regular season episode with somebody going home top 2 lip sync, which we have never before had on the show. That was a twist that was there to give some extra shock to the episode never to be seen again on the season. Had it not happened, Victoria probably would have gone on to win the season. And before you ask, no, I won't be doing that what if video, as we have not seen Victoria in enough challenges to properly assess how she would have done in the rest of the season. So my blanket statement is that she probably would have won the season, given that she has good looks, she's funny, she is also RuPaul's kind of funny, she's a good confessional giver, she has a traditional style of drag that is not necessarily old, so the old as main judges can appreciate it while not seeing that it's predictable. And also, to top it all off, think of the good publicity the show would have got with Victoria winning. But I digress. In this video, I will talk about five times on Drag Race when a queen, or queens, were screwed over by the twist introduced into the game that previously was never mentioned. The levels of how much they were screwed over do differ. So, that's why we're doing a ranking and not just, like, a list. I bet you that if you take, like, 10 seconds to think about the topic, you'll think of the same five instances, because thankfully, Drag Race has not had too many twists that screw people over and out of the race. Let's get in the fifth place, starting very lightly, we have Shea in season 9. The story goes as follows. Peppermint, Sasha, Shea and Trinity have reached the top 4 episode of season 9. A season full of very disappointing lip syncs, where on more than one occasion, someone just gave up and did not give it their all, making the lip syncs seem kind of negligible. So, following what they did on seasons 6, 7, and 8, one queen was to be eliminated so that we could have a top 3 in the finale. The queen in question was Peppermint. However, after filming her elimination, they also filmed the ending where there is a top 4. This means that, in the original timeline, the top 3 of season 9 are Sasha, Shay, and Trinity. Shay, in that scenario, had the best track record, and also dominated the season, so to almost everyone, she was the clear winner. We were just waiting to see her get the crown, basically. But then, the season starts airing, the audience does not respond well to RuPaul's therapy race, and they find the lip syncs underwhelming for the most part. The show, in order to salvage the season, comes up with the lip syncing for the crown finale format, which, to be perfectly honest with you, was much needed after the overall blandness of the lip syncs on that season. Thus, in the eyes of many, this twist hurt Shay a lot, given that the crown was as good as hers. To add on to that, looking at the top four, Peppermint was shown as a great performer. Trinity was shown as a great performer. Sasha was a mystery, and so a wild card. And Shay, well... She did the bare minimum in her lip sync against Nina because, as Nina has shared, she told Shay that she was not going to go all in against her in that lip sync in order to let her win. From a more personal plan that I won't get too much into out of just, you know, human decency, somebody in Shay's family died sometime before the filming of the finale, which RuPaul milked during her interview with Shay, so I assume that she was not at her best there. These last couple of bits would not have mattered at all had the twist not been introduced into the season. Shea being screwed over is the lowest on the list because, one, we can understand why the twist happened, and two, she had the same amount of time to prepare as the rest of the girls. Yes, I know, she also said that somebody stole all of her costumes and reveals and whatnot that she had planned for the finale right before the finale, but... To me, that always sounded like Willem giving us 12 different versions of why she was disqualified from season 4, until she ultimately found the most believable one. Let's get 
In the fourth place, we have a queen that was screwed over by a twist that was introduced not in the last, but in the first episode. All Stars 2 rolls around. The cast goes into it thinking that they were going to be playing by the same format of if you mess up, you'll have a chance to compete to stay in the competition in the bottom two lip sync. When they get there, they are told by Rue first that he wouldn't be eliminating anybody in the season. The girls show their talents, which is how it should be, I will die on this hill, and the cast is told that, yeah, Rue won't be eliminating anyone directly, but that the queens would be eliminating each other. Effectively throwing away the lip sync for your life format. Now, you might say, okay, so this in theory screwed over every single queen on this season. Are all of them number four? Not exactly. In that first episode's bottom three, we saw Adore, Coco, and Jeremy, formerly known as Fifi. They are not in charge of their own fates top two queens are. Coco, had she had a chance to lip sync for her life, would have murdered both Adore and Jeremy. To make matters worse, let me ask, why a bottom three? Jeremy took a risk that did not pay off. So yeah, sure, the up for elimination placement makes sense. Adore should not have even been judged on how she looked when her talent was singing, but Let's be real, her singing, her technique especially in that performance were horrible, so her placement was bottom two worthy. Coco got screwed over by the production twice, even before the show began. According to Katya, Coco's original talent show performance was her doing Janet Jackson's chair routine, and the producers nixed that only a few days before the season started filming. Of course, you might say that Coco screwed herself over there, because she went for a song that the show did not have the rights to, so let's ignore that part. Oh, the show can pay to use the rhythm of the night 25 times in each episode of season 12 so that Rue can show off his grandpa boner or crystal, but they cannot pay for one minute of a track or a recreation of it in order to keep the competition as fair as possible. <laughs> Coco probably did not fight too hard against the producers, because she thought, hey, even if I end up in the bottom two, I'll just murder whoever I'm in the bottom two with. But then the twist came in and we did not get to see legitimately one of the most underrated queens the show has ever seen. Just do the, the thing that she does, the like, have you seen Coco Lip Sync? Oh, and just by the way, this does not affect any future All-Star seasons. Because the queens more or less knew that lip syncing for their life in the classic sense was out of the window immediately. For the All-Stars 2 cast it was a twist, but for Coco especially, it was a twist that screwed her over. Let's get the third spot might come off as a lot, but just hear me out. Chad Michaels on season 4. Now, you might be thinking, there was a twist on season 4 that affected Chad? Yep. Drag Race originally went with crowning their winner after the competition of the season ends, meaning that there was no waiting between when the season was filmed and when the finale was filmed. Thus, the show had enough time to craft a proper narrative for the top three and every other queen based on where they place and how they interact with the winner, giving us good to great seasons. With this also we got three winners where we can understand why they won, even though two out of three of them were not even the best competitors overall. In season three, Everyone and their mom knew that Raja was going to win it. Mariah famously, after being eliminated, congratulated Raja for winning the season in her mirror message, where up until that point, Raja was not even the best competitor. She was not dominating the season. It was Alexis' season by that point. Anyways, obviously her being Rue's friend did play a part in her being pushed towards the crown. Now saying that does not discredit her talents. Just calm down, guys. Go outside, interact with people, hug your friends. I don't know. Raja winning had been leaked by some trash human rat, who we won't even name, even before the season began airing. In order to prevent this from happening in the future, the show decided to film the finale after the season aired, and also to film every queen in the top three being crowned. How does this twist negatively affect Chad Michael specifically? Well, let's see. Chad had a classic style of drag that focused mostly on emulating a certain type of a woman or femininity in general. In varying degrees, this also describes the first three winners. Furthermore, Chad in the season was shown as being not just a jack of all trades, but a master of all of them. Her track record was on par with Sharon's, so 
it seems like the crown could have been hers. You may disagree, but remember, we saw a season that was edited to present Sharon as the underdog villain. Mm, Freudian slip. We saw a season that was edited to present Sharon as the underdog and the victim, and ultimately the winner. However, that's not really what happened behind the scenes of that season. Dita Ritz, who was also in season four, recently revealed, well, actually repeated that Sharon behind the scenes called the black queens on the cast the N-word multiple times, which is why the likes of Dita, Latrice, and Chad, as you know, a person that knows that that's not okay, were openly against Sharon. However, and Again, that happened behind the scenes, and assuming that it was caught on camera, it wouldn't be a good look for the show to show one of the frontrunners acting that way. So what did they do? They edited the season in a way not to show the other queen's frustration with Sharon, making it seem as if they just don't get her. She's just so misunderstood. Now, of course, some might say that what Dita had said is just one person's story, but there's no smoke without fire. Well, unless we're talking about dry ice. Thus, we get a season where the biggest story is about Sharon and Jeremy. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised to learn that Jeremy also felt such strong dislike towards Sharon because of her behavior behind the scenes. Chad, thus, got left in the dust by the producers. Oh my god, is that why they call her Mother Dust? The audience watched a season where somebody who would have been the most obvious winner by the show's standards up to that point was a supporting player to the Sharon vs. Jeremy story, where Sharon was the protagonist and Jeremy was the antagonist. With how she was presented and with her having a cool style that was actually appreciated by the show, there was no way for Sharon not to be crowned and for Chad not to miss out on that win. Of course, None of this would have happened had they crowned in the flowers in season one, and I will die on this hill as well. Let's get Ooh, the last entry was a long one and took some time to get to the point, so the number two spot I'll try to keep short and sweet. Hmm, interesting that I said short because here, in this spot, we have the entire cast of All Stars 1. A part of me is glad that it happened and that we got such a shit of a season because RuPaul doing an all-star season after only four seasons of the show, when Survivor, a show that was leaps and bounds more popular and better, waited seven seasons for their first all-star season. I would say that it was a wake-up call for Ru not to be so cocky and not to overestimate the stuff he makes, because clearly the network did not believe in the season, and so they only gave it six episodes. But we know RuPaul, he did not learn anything from that mistake. The story goes as follows. The queens sign a contract for a six episode season. They are confused. The first eight queens are in the workroom thinking that they're the cast. And then the ninth queen comes in. And then 10th. And 11th and 12th. And they figure out what's about to happen. On one hand, great competitors like Manila, Chad, Nina, and Alexis lost their opportunity to properly fight for the crown. On the other, Mimi, Tammy, and Chanel lost their opportunity to redeem themselves properly. Overall, we, the audience, lost what would have been one of the best seasons of the show. Had they only not done that stupid competing in pairs twist. Let's get screwed. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do a fun little exercise. Write down in the comments who you think I think was most screwed over by the production adding a twist into the season. And while you type, I will sing for you. Yay, yay, yay. Okay, time's up. It's Shangela, guys, come on. Like, it's Shangela on All Stars 3. Yes, I still stand behind the fact that she was not robbed because she never actually had the crown. It's not over until the old lady lip syncs, you know what I mean? But was she millimeters away from that crown and was then crushed by a boulder? Yes. Yes, she was. Adding that jury twist at the end was extremely unfair. And it's something that cannot work on Drag Race. First, why is it extremely unfair? Because, one, the queens in the competition never knew that there was going to be a jury at the end. They thought that, like on All Stars 2, where the new format was introduced, at the end, Rue would crown the strongest competitor out of the top four. So, eliminating somebody in the grand scheme of things was a no biggie. However, with the added twist, by design, the queens that won the most also had the least chance of getting the votes from the queens on the jury. Because, shocker, it is personal, it's drag. 
We can pretend all we want, but like 90% of the queens on the show leave a huge chunk of their personalities and their self-worth in their drag. For them, it's not just a game. It's also usually how they make their living, where they first found themselves, where they may have found real families for the first time. So being told by one of your colleagues that they value you the least out of a certain group of queens probably hurts. A jury works on Survivor, because most of the time, the people there won't take being voted out personally, because they know that they're playing a game. They might feel hurt in the moment, but by the end, they'll more or less be a good sport about it. It. This cannot work on Drag Race. Another layer of this are the jury speeches, where Kennedy, who had the worst track record on the top four and the worst performance in the top four performance, went for a more personal reason to winning. Shangela essentially knew she was screwed. Trixie kinda tried to make it fair by saying that Shangela should be in that top two because she did the best and also showed that she, meaning Trixie, had the best overall relationship with the overall cast, putting also forward the glow up that she had since season seven. And BB, uh, yeah, let's look at how the queens voted. Aja, who was eliminated by BB, voted for Kennedy and Trixie, social aspect over competition performance. Dela, who took herself out, voted for Kennedy and Trixie, social aspect over competition performance. Chi Chi, who was taken out by Shangela and Dela, voted for Kennedy and Trixie, social aspect over competition performance. Milk, who was taken out by Kennedy, actually voted for Kennedy as her second option, but her first was Trixie. So again, social aspect over competition competition performance. The only queens that even remotely valued competition performance were Morgan and Torji, both taken out by Shangela, mind you, who gave their votes to Bibi and Shangela respectively. However, and again, here there was more of a social aspect that went into play rather than competition performance. Had the queens known from the beginning that there was to be a jury, they most probably would have played differently. Shangela was blindsided and screwed over by the production and her own fellow castmates. And that's it. That's the video. Hope you had a fun weekend, and I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you're doing well overall. Thank you for watching.